Good evening, everybody out there. Good evening, Rabbi Aaron. Nice to see you. Good evening, Rabbi Shaya, and good evening, everyone. It's good to see you too. It's really special to be sharing this evening together with everyone. So tell me, Rabbi Shaya, what's on the agenda? What are we going to be discussing? Okay, so tonight our our agenda is to discuss the goal of Seder night. What do we need to achieve on Seder night? And I'll tell you why this is so important. Because we all know that Seder night is so central to the Jewish family. Everyone across the whole spectrum of world Jewry is engaged with Seder night. And we have to ask ourselves, what is the fuss about? What's so unique? What's so special about Seder night? What is it? Powerful question. You know, I'm thinking about this. And um, the first thing that comes to mind is that Seder night was sort of the beginning. It was the start. It was the birth of the Jewish people. And, and that's quite important. But with your question in mind, and I'm thinking about the amount of effort that goes into Seder night, the central place that it takes in the year, there's got to be something more to it. So what do you think? Tell us what you think sets Seder night apart. So that's a very, very good point. Because, yes, it's true. Like you say, Seder night, we talk about the birth of the Jewish people. That was the very beginning. But it's something that's much more fundamental. And that is like Rabbi Herman said before, because Seder night is the night that we pass on our story, our story, our history onto the next generation. You see, since the year, the very year that it all happened, up until today in an unbroken chain of transmission, the Jewish family has sat down together as a unit, grandparents with grandchildren, parents with their children, and have said over this story, they've given over the richness of our heritage to the next generation on Seder night. That's unique about Seder night. Well, that's, it's, it's very powerful what you're sharing, but I'll tell you what I struggle is that Seder night happened thousands of years ago. I mean, the, the Jewish people left Egypt. It was, it's, it's thousands of years and it's, you know, different generations. And I just, I struggled to connect to something that was just so long ago. I don't know. So, Rabbi Lippin, you say thousands, you say thousands and thousands of years ago. Do you, do you by any chance know the exact amount of years ago that this happened? Okay, so a little birdie's mentioned that this year happens to be a very special one. Apparently, this year is 3,333 years. Rabbi Litwin, Rabbi Litwin, I'm sorry. You, you've said that a little birdie somebody told you. I mean, can, can we not work this out ourselves? Can we work this out ourselves, maybe? I think we're going to test your maths brain, Rabbi Litwin. Oh, no, I'm, I'm a rabbi, not a mathematician. I can tell you that. Oh, okay. A, a calculator? Maybe a calculator? All right, a calculator. They, they call them phones nowadays, but I've, <laughs> I've got it at the ready. Okay, so the year that the event took place was year 2448, okay? Correct. And the year we're in now is? The Jewish year now? Starts with a five. A five, that's very helpful. Okay, the Jewish year now is 5781. Right, so 5781 was the year we find ourselves in now, minus the year the event happened, 2448. What number do we get to? 5781 minus 2448. And the answer is um, 3333, three, 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 which is a very <laughs> long time, Rabbi Grunfeld. Correct. But at least we can take ownership ourselves that we know what the year is. 3,333 years ago. And yes, I agree. That does feel like such a long time ago. But you know what? You're right. When you're looking at it in terms of years, then it's a very long time ago. But when you're looking about, look at it in terms of transmission, in terms of the process of transmission, it's much closer to home. And let me explain. Would you agree that a generation is about 25 years? Yeah, sounds about right. Sounds right? So we're talking about a parent saying, telling over the story to their child. So about every 25 years. So let's take the figure 3,333, Divided by 25. What figure do we get to? Okay, calculator still here. 3333 three, 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 divided by 25 comes out to 133, which is, right, it's already more palatable, 133. Wow, so it's only 133 generations ago, but it gets much better than that. Much better than that. Because many of us and many of the people listening to this would have sat at a Seder night with their grandparents. They would have heard this story have been handed down from their grandparents. So you can skip a generation. 
So let's take 3,333 divided by 50. What number do we get now? Okay, I'm getting used to this by now. So 3333 three, 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 divided by 50. Wow, it's just 66. Wow, 66. That's all it is. 66 links in this chain. A chain that started on the year of the event, the time of the Exodus, leading up to Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, when the Jewish people had the revelation, heard Hashem speak. There's only 66 links in this chain. And that means that in terms of the message being given over, there are only 66 links, which means that this year, our children or grandchildren listening to this story, they will be number 67 or number 70 on this marvelous link of transmission, marvelous chain of transmission. And that already feels so much more relatable, so much closer to home. And in this sense, in this sense, the goal of Sadina is to ensure that we continue this incredible responsibility of passing on our rich heritage, our story onto the next generation, creating the next link of this marvelous chain, linking the past and the future. Wow, it's really powerful thought the way you present it. I, I know this will, you know, have a good a positive impact on, on my say the night this year. So thank you for that, Rabchaya. And if I can just add that as we know, we want to really engage our children and make it very relatable to them and to help to visualize. And we have a wonderful prop over here where we can actually show our children in a very visual and very real way how close they are to that original link in the chain. If we open up here, we have a a whole chain here, we can show our children the very first link in the chain is the actual event, is our great, great, great grandfathers. But it's not such a huge chain. We see the generation by generation, the message being passed over. And the latest link in this chain is this Sadie night, our children and our grandchildren hearing ourselves give over this marvelous story of our history. And that is a really powerful prop. And just to mention for everyone um, listening and watching, if you haven't yet already um, purchased the very unique production that Peter put out for Pesach this year, which is actually the background of our screen, and the link is right below to order one right away, um, then I advise you do that oh, right away. Sorry, not right away. I think you should wait till we finish speaking, I think. Don't yeah, just I at least till I'm finished speaking. But yeah. <laughs> so if you haven't yet ordered the Seed Pesach in a box, uh, it, seriously, you've got to do it. And as an added bonus, you will actually get one of those props that Rav has just shared with everyone in your box. And it's not just a, any box. It's, it's a must buy. So yeah, I'm sure you've all ordered one. And if you haven't, you're going to be clicking the link when we finish shortly. Okay. So we've discussed the importance of passing this legacy on to the next generation. But what is the essence? What is the message that we're actually passing on to our children, Rabaran? Good. That's a really deep question because, you know, we've discussed the beauty of how we're links in a chain. But what are we actually transmitting? What are we actually passing on? So I want to share with everyone something really beautiful that I actually heard about five years ago when I actually joined the Seed family. And I can't remember if I heard it from you or um, your father or Rabbi Herman. I, I, one second, one second. What, was, was it good? A very powerful piece of uh, information. It was definitely me. It was definitely me. <laughs> All right, we'll give we'll give you the credit. I'm <laughs> sure. Um, I've heard some very powerful things from you over the years, so I, I'd like to acknowledge that anyway. So, so what I want to share with everyone is is the story of the King of Khazar. So, the King of Khazar he lived about a thousand years ago, and he was fascinated by religion, and he decided to explore all the different religions out there himself. Now, being a king, he didn't have to go out there. He just demanded a representative from each religion to come before him in his palace and actually present to him their belief, their perception, their understanding of God. So obviously amongst them was a rabbi. The rabbi was Rabbi Yehuda HaChassid. And the rabbi comes before the king and he begins to present what Hashem is to us. And he starts with the very first of the Ten Commandments. And he reads out, I am Hashem, your God, the way Hashem introduces himself to us. I am Hashem, your God, who took you out of the land of Egypt. The, you know, the king is sitting there on his throne, stroking his beard, contemplative. And he suddenly stops. He stops the rabbi and he says, stop, I don't understand. 
this is your God introducing himself. He's Now, if I was God and I was writing my CV, I was introducing myself, surely you believe that your God created the world, created the galaxies, created the sun, created the moon, created the stars, created the human, created the trees, created the animals. He created it all. So if I'm writing my CV and I'm God and I have a choice to either say, oh, I'm the one who created everything or to say, I'm the one who took the Jews out of Egypt, which was a massive thing. Don't get me wrong. Surely, as God, I would want to talk about creating the world first. The rabbi smiled, Rabbi Yehuda Chassid, and he shared the most unreal concept, which is what I want to share with you this evening. It stayed with me all these years, and I know it will stay with you as well. And you see, of course, Hashem is the one who created the world, the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies, everything. Yes, of course, he made it all. And we know that. We know that intellectually. We know that conceptually. We know that logically. But we weren't there when the world was created. We didn't get a chance to experience that ourselves. We didn't see it firsthand. The exodus is something that we all experienced. We saw. We felt. It was tangible. We lived through that experience. Creating the world is maybe more impressive, but it was conceptual. The exodus was something we experienced. And we didn't need anyone to tell us about it. We saw it ourselves. And this, my friends, this is Pesach. Every Seder night, we get together with our families and we try to reenact, to recreate, to relive that experience that we did experience ourselves. We try to create, to generate the atmosphere for our families and our children. When we're able to re create the atmosphere, feel, relive the story for ourselves, we will be able to properly internalize the messages that come with it. And we'll also be able to, be, to know that our children will be great ambassadors to carry the next link, like Reb Shaya discussed earlier. Wow, wow, wow. That is so powerful and so beautifully presented. And I just want to add that this fits in so beautifully to what the rabbis tell us. They say to us that they're telling us that it's not good enough just to relate and to say over the story, but we're obligated on Saturday night to literally re-experience that event, to imagine ourselves that we ourselves have gone out of Egypt. And the idea being, because we need to relive it, if we get ourselves excited, visualize what's happened, discuss what's happened, and imagine ourselves haven't had the experience, then we are literally giving over that same inspiration that our fathers experienced then. They think about it, they experience an absolute clarity of Hashem in the world and Hashem in their lives. There was no question. It was an absolute clarity. They knew that Hashem was running and governing the world, both on a global level and on an individual level. That was so clear to them at the time. And every year, Every parent and grandparent has gone from year to year, given over that experiencing, relived that experience, reenacting the experience so that we can actually feel that clarity and give that clarity over to the next generation.